welcome friends once again to our nptel mooc module on health economics uh, we are on our uh, third uh, uh, week or unit number 3 explaining on um, supply side uh, of health or uh, you know uh, supply in healthcare we have already started in the previous lecture uh, on Physician is you know healthcare provider or uh, I mean physician says health provider. So this is our lecture number two, second uh, sequence of this particular lecture. We discuss about um, you know um, suppliers determine demand and and also uh, or the primary demand as well as uh, we discuss about supplier induced demand SID trends in supply of physicians. Also, we discussed uh, supply induced demand uh, from increase in physician density and conditions facilitating uh, demand inducements. So, the last couple of uh, points we will also re emphasize um, in our lecture as well. We again uh, focus on the supply induced demand through the physicians. Uh, so, this is as, um, as, as, as follows. Uh, we will we'll talk about uh, the physician's uh, you know behavior through a model and we will also empirically examine um, uh, the, the behavior how it is optimal for the supply uh, you know, side and um, there are some forms of uh, discrimination made by physicians. One of the discrimination is through the racial one or maybe through efficiency and non efficiency based discrimination etc. will emphasize last but not the least aspect covered in this lecture is on labor market as well as uh, their wages are uh, you know, responsible for determining you know supply in healthcare through the uh, physicians. Once again um, counting the assumptions we, we you can follow our previous lecture uh, for your uh, knowledge. P we are taking as price and uh, A is largely the physician which are considered to be identical hence they are considered as identical physicians. N is the inhabitants or the persons or the patients. Then uh, you know delta stands for A upon N basically we are counting this as physician you know density or physician population ratio. So, this is the one we are going to use the most in your model. So, our model is on um, physician behavior. So, we start with uh, no demand inducement and uh, if there is any inducement. If there is no inducement as simple as that that is basically called uh, you know primary demand for physicians. It is uh, precisely the cases or number of cases times the population uh, in uh, divided by the you know uh, identical physicians. So, that is n by a or a by n is precisely called the delta. So, m upon delta is called the primary demand for physicians. Whereas, when you use uh, uh, inducement, we already discuss how inducements are made in healthcare and, um, and that is uh, as we, we have seen in number of uh, cases in Indian context um, in particular. Uh, since supply side is is is, is um, quite uh, you know uh, less as compared to the demand side, uh, hence you know supply inducement is expected to be very high, and so that we I mean supply uh, the hospitals or the you know healthcare units used to provoke the patients in various ways to increase their demand. Hence, a component we are just adding which is um, um, from the primary um, demand pattern uh, M upon uh, delta plus S, S stands for the inducement unit of inducements. So, M we have already discussed that is called demand for physician uh, services. So, we will be discussing all these in our uh, model and out of uh, the total time, uh, the time as a factor we are considering as well in the model. And we are also referring to the original um, you know author. There are some minor uh, cosmetic changes to the author. We will also cite author's work at the end. And um, 
in this case uh, t proportion of time that is utilized for healthcare and uh, um, to induce the demand we are saying that the optimum time proportion is 1 and out of that at minimum of h time or h units of time is required for healthcare and um, that is precisely a function of uh, the induced um, content or the units and the delta. So, delta we have already mentioned that they are density okay, uh, of for the physicians, we have already mentioned this physician density or physician population ratio. So, uh, uh, time constant we have emphasized, now we discuss about uh, the disposable income and how it is actually inspiring the physician to be you know, or the you know, health units to influence the demand. So, uh, disposable income of the physicians is largely a function of their revenue which is basically P times T. P is um, we have already discussed here the price and T is the time uh, and the practice expenses, taxes, etc. Largely, I discussed in the last lecture that um, you know why is um, is actually other P and T uh, practices, expenses, and taxes are already you know part of the revenue P T. Hence, the simple function we are mentioning this is y is equal to y y of P T. So, and then this is considered to be a concave function with its um, feature as um, first order derivative to be positive and the second order derivative is negative. So, hence disposable income is an increasing and concave function of physician's uh, consumption. Here, um, the utility function is defined and uh, utility function is defined in terms of which is disposable income, time and the induced you know demand. Physician's utility function is strictly concave, it depends uh, positively on consumption and negatively on working hours or time and demand inducements. Okay. Hence, uh, there are uh, three uh, possibility conditions, one is its first order derivative will be positive and uh, second order negative that is precisely called the concave uh, function and, uh, and, and, and with respect to that is with respect to income first order derivative with respect to income and what happens to in terms of t uh, in respect to t this is in terms of first one is in terms of y second one is of t third one is in terms of the induced you know demand units ok. So, and there are uh, possibilities um, uh, with respect to t of course, the utility when t increases the utility actually you know declines and in terms of induced demand also declines. Uh, there are also um, cross possibilities you know um, complementary goods case when you y and t are complementing each other, consumption and leisure are actually complemented. Similarly, income and um, income and uh, induced you know demand they, they, that is also complementing each other then we have also try to find their uh, cross uh, you know second order derivatives y observe that uh, um, you know um, the second derivative um, for, for y and t in that case it is um, uh, considered to be in, uh, no, no, uh, non positive or and, and others like with y and s is also non positive whereas um, in case of s and t that is you know workload time has no effect it is considered to be 0. Uh, the second derivative here is considered to be 0 that that means that workload time has no effect on physicians attitude towards professional ethics. So, uh, time has hardly any effects in terms of professional ethics hence you know in, uh, the change is considered to be 0. So, we are just highlighting this just to clarify that there, there, there is negative uh, you know um, um, changes negative because it is uh, incompatible with professional ethics ok. You can um, refer this uh, the book which we have uh, cited and that will be useful further. A physician maximizes his or her utility uh, with respect to y, t and s by choosing optimal amount 
um, in that case maybe y star, t star and a star given the constant, constant will be as I already mentioned uh, will be your um, you know um, that is your uh, uh, induced you know supply function a h uh, should be um, uh, should be equalized with uh, you know the uh, you know m upon delta plus uh, s that is the total induced supply and uh, h should be st strictly positive and t um, uh, t should be having a minimum level of h and 1. So, the optima we can uh, discuss one by one this is based on the market condition and position for preferences. So, all possibilities uh, that means you know uh, S might be 0, S is basically induced supply units might be 0 or T might be the maximum utilization or, uh, or other you know boundary possibilities S equal to 0, T equal to uh, T is less than 1, S is greater than 0, T is less than 1 and S is greater than 0 and T equal to 1 etc. all 4 possibilities are discussed. So, here <coughs> when first boundary con conditions uh, occurs uh, both are 1 that means when physician density is, is low um, uh, ok. So, uh, physician density is low that market demand cannot be made with all physicians working maximum amount of time ok. And uh, second one, second one case inducement is actually 0, S equal to 0. When ethics or preferences for leisure are very strong and even physicians are working below capacity and but they are just meeting primary demand only. On uh, the first case T equal to 0 that means they are actually utilizing the maximum you know time hence hardly there is any scope for the inducement. Then uh, on the third one that is called interior uh, optimum because both are the interior one I mean um, S is non-equal and also T is non-equal to 1. In that case when physician's density is so high that even with optimum amount of demand inducement they are working below full capacity. Last one is called optimum with uh, T equal to 1 and uh, uh, S there is certain you know inducement when physicians are inducing demand until full capacity is reached. These three requires you know on the first one actually it is a simple Lagrangian optimization method is required, but other there are some inequalities conditions in the constant function hence uh, nonlinear programming is required and Kontoker is usually Kontoker condition is usually suggested. Uh, so, these three cases requires Kontaker conditions. For the cases involving inequality, the Kontaker uh, conditions will be uh, you know, formed as follows. First step, uh, we will put the total demand for physicians equations in utility functions that is e u equal to you know y, t and s and of course, this is a, uh, this is a function of induced demand s only. The constant will be formed out of time constant. Uh, and it will uh, be an inequality. So, the utility function is um, y, t and s, y is y, y you know um, p t. So, y p t is explained over here, this is what is your t and y is, is p t and then this person is your t, then this is s ok and subject to t uh, constraint is given and um, inequality constants are like you know that delta uh, sorry that uh, induced uh, you know uh, supply uh, function should be maximum you know at maximum utilizing uh, one or less of the time ok. And at S is considered to be greater than or equal to 0 then only we are actually thinking of the Kontaker conditions. Now, if we make uh, that uh, you know um, inequality conditions equalized with uh, the boundary that means if we add certain uh, domain variable x ok uh, then that might be equalized with 1 that m upon you know uh, delta plus s 
plus uh, x we are just uh, adding a dummy uh, variable so that that will be equalized with 1 where x is considered to be non negative restrictions all right so to um, uh, now consider a problem with non uh, no negativity uh, re restrictions on the choice variables only with no other constraints so we are as an example we are just maximizing profit or pi as a function of x subject to x is positive okay or greater than or equal to non negative so we are just taking a non negative restrictions on the choice uh, variables uh, as a simple example uh, do you get optimized value uh, in each case with uh, faster derivative uh, that is equal to 0 if not then why you can just see if you will just take the faster derivative since our constant function is actually you know 0 and greater than 0 or non negative so uh, in 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 these functions you will find uh, that the optimization occurs in in uh, faster derivative might occur at 0 place as well when x equal to 0 so this this really you know diluting the matter that you know um, even if um, x um, x x or the units of supply is 0 still uh, health conditioning or the and the you know uh, maximization point occurs at 0 you know uh, output which is which seems to be unreal and, and not not right and hence the optimization uh, this way simple optimization techniques is not actually uh, clarifying the case hence to explain uh, all sort of things we will um, uh, discuss these three cases case 1 and case 2 and case 3 uh, so case 1 basically the faster derivative is 0 uh, and uh, where uh, the you know output is actually uh, the x is positive and whereas uh, in the case 2 and case 3 for the uh, case 2 the faster derivative is is 0 but in case 3 the faster derivative is actually optimizing uh, is tangential but not 0 it is actually less than 0. So, when it is faster derivative is 0, it gives a value x equal to 0, which is really not the k, not, not the you know, right uh, you know, indicator of optimizing. So, uh, and another solution to this is actually three cases uh, in our typical way of optimizing uh, or our optimizing condition is through the first order and second order derivative, and we usually equal, equalizing is to, to 0. But if you take the product in three cases, but product wise that is you know x times its uh, first value of the first order derivative, this is in all cases this is optimizing and it is equal to 0. So, this can be considered as a solution uh, for further use. Okay. So, uh, we will be utilizing when non-negative restrictions are imposed in equality constraint problem constant problem the regular faster conditions becomes uh, you know uh, less than 0 and or or a, a, a x is greater than uh, 0 or the product is actually product of this is equal to 0. The Lagrangian function will be formed by taking lambda as Lagrangian multiplier subsequently the faster conditions in that case will be this. Okay. So, you have taken uh, y, uh, t and, and, and s with a Lagrangian you know uh, constraint function and this is actually precisely um, m plus um, s, m plus s plus x equal to 1. So, we have taken 1 minus this. So, this portion is actually equal to 0. So, lambda times 0 is 0. So, actually utility function is nothing but y, p and y, t and s through the Lagrangian optimizing you know uh, formula we used to uh, take um, the conditions in that case with respect to you know s we know that uh, like uh, here with respect to s with respect to uh, x and with respect to lambda three three indicators uh, are very important to discuss so when we take with respect to s it is it is actually um, non-positive and whereas 
the product that is uh, you know s time you know uh, d uh, d uh, g, g by d s is equal to 0 and uh, uh, and then the, the, the product one is actually x times the, the fast order derivative is equal to 0 and this is what we are going to use it which we have started explaining here. This second aspect that is the product is, is going to be very useful. We note that d uh, z by d x is nothing that is basically uh, minus uh, lambda. We use this information to simplify you know lambda once uh, we define the value that is basically uh, useful for simplifying the uh, condition. Now, um, simplifying the, 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 the this equation we will get uh, d j upon d s is uh, non uh, positive and uh, and the, the product is 0. So, by, by, by solving this um, we will find that um, I will solve this you know equations and these conditions are usually called cone tucker conditions. Once we find d j upon d uh, you know lambda and finally, we, we arrive into the you know uh, solutions and these are the necessary conditions for the uh, optimization problem. We will also clarify uh, the exact uh, interpretation of it. You will get uh, n number of equation uh, for n um, variable and uh, to solve them to get optimal solution for the extremum. Then the fourth step is to confirm whether uh, the extremum is maximum or minimum and we check the second order condition as, as below. So, we uh, in that case when there are faster condition and second order condition they all together decide uh, the solution we used to take the border Hessian you know determinant. So, we use border Hessian you know uh, that is H form that is mixed matrix of first and second order derivative of the objective and constant equations. So, uh, to maximize the z function of with and, and, and subject to the um, you know, constant functions ok. And uh, so, so this is what is interpreted at this moment uh, for your reference you can follow the book and uh, the, the mathematical economics books to get the idea of water Hessian determinants. Hence in 4 cases which I have started explaining. Uh, they are actually starting with the boundary optimum then uh, cone tucker conditions will also emphasize re emphasize this. So, the solutions uh, would be with the simple example would be uh, given that t equal to 1 uh, we, we have taken that t equal to 1 the first case hence the y is equal to only y p no t is no, no longer there hence the utility function will be y, y in terms of p ok. Uh, so, effect of increase in uh, you know um, delta on number of services provided per, per patient that is Q. So, uh, delta is very uh, low such that uh, you know um, such that the m, m upon delta should be you know uh, greater than or equal to 1 that is the primary demand exceeds the physician's you know working capacity with a constraint of t is less than or equal to 1 is binding. Since t equal to 1 in our case and physician supply is measured uh, in units of uh, you know physicians working time, physician supply would be of course equal to we have already explained A is our uh, you know uh, supply physician supply. Now, in this case it will be uh, A times 1 unit per percent you know physician supply is equal to A upon N which is precisely the delta. Hence, q is equal to a upon n, which we already uh, mentioned as q in our example. Okay, then um, uh, so if and that that is precisely the the, the delta. You take uh, dq by uh, d delta, it is equal to one. This means that uh, the billings per patients are proportional to physician density. So once the physician density increases, billing proportional. Uh, the, 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 the patients are considered to be proportional to it. This is basically the first one, second, third and fourth conditions uh, out of the Kontaker uh, formula, uh, Kontaker conditions. We will find a number of things. We start with A is equal to 0, hence in a function, u to the function you will see this. This is uh, 0 is, is given rest are as per our uh, you know discussion we made it in the previous one. 
So, uh, basically we want to say here that the effect of increase in delta that is the you know um, uh, doctors um, induce induce you know demand um, um, for health effect of this induced demand for health on number of services provided per, per patient in that in this case physicians do not induce uh, demand because of preference for leisure and ethical orientations since a is equal to 0 hence q is equal to m that is um, whatever the q was there this is not precisely the primary uh, demand hence dq uh, by d delta is equal to 0. So, in this case billings per patient do not depend upon physician density uh, in this range of delta. Whereas, in another interior uh, optimum case we will see that all have certain value. So, it is little complicated. Uh, so, the, the optimum conditions will be p times faster derivative and it is uh, y prime u prime and uh, with respect to t and with respect to s that should be equal to 0. So, a, s is uh, the function of exogenous variable in this case that is uh, variables okay. and, a, and s is a function of uh, here delta p and m. So, in this case the demand is induced to the point where the marginal benefit of additional consumption equals you know the marginal utility uh, uh, loss of the additional working hours and the bad conscience resulting from demand inducement. The, 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 the solution to it uh, precisely you can see the same equation where just there is a minor change s plus uh, you know, delta times ds upon dq uh, which we did in the previous two cases. So, there are two effects in this case one is direct and indirect uh, effect indirect effect is that it, uh, it depends upon the impact of delta on uh, demand inducement at the level d s upon uh, d delta. The last one again it has uh, certain you know, boundary uh, conditions that uh, t uh, is used as a with the full capacity. Uh, so, in this case s is equal to 1 uh, 1 minus m upon uh, delta. So, at the, as delta increases or the induced uh, demand increases physician density actually uh, increases all right. So, and the effect of increasing this on um, delta on the patient uh, is that m upon um, I mean this is similar to that of case first case here we have binding time constant, but sigma uh, oh sorry the delta is high. Hence, uh, m upon delta is less than 1 this implies high motive for induced demand up to the full capacity as due to high competition working below competition. Physician supply would be of course, a times you know 1 units per percent you know physician supply will be a upon n and um, by all possibilities dq by d delta is equal to 1 that means, billings per patient are proportional to that of physician density as long as all physicians work at full capacity. Okay. So, you can just see all three um, uh, four cases are actually de discussed in three regions. Um, you can see till uh, here we are discussing physician uh, density and uh, physician billing per person that is q. Okay. So, till it is uh, m level is e that is primary uh, demand you will see that billing physician billing per percent is proportionately higher. Um, first region of the straight line shows case 1 and 4 which uh, the stage 1 stage 2 stage 4 out of that 1 and 4 basically it, it increases. And um, in, in region 2 horizontal line shows case 2 of without demand inducement exist whereas, case 3 in the region uh, 3 with uh, 2 effects direct and indirect effect. Okay. So, so, so that depends upon uh, the uh, indicators which you already discussed. So, theory of supply induced demand that is uh, SID is, is uh, so far as uh, SID is concerned um, uh, that is uh, the SID is concerned with physicians you know uh, reaction to changes in physician density and the level of regulated fees that is P. Um, it has effect uh, 
uh, of physician density that means if physician density varies with cases of optimality and effect of fee level is ambiguous because of the substitution and income effect leads to increase and decrease in service volume respectively. There are some empirical uh, identification by uh, different other authors, um, Fuchs 78 in his paper uh, uh, discuss about uh, cross sectional study based on US, USA between 1963 to 1970. They observed that an increase in 10 percent uh, you know, in surgeon's density leads to a 3 percent increase um, in the number of uh, surgery keeping other variable constant and this also support the SID hypothesis we already discussed. Similarly, another case um, identified by some authors, uh, it is on rising hysterectomy cases in India, some papers C. Sri Devnath, um, uh, so um, uh, working paper you can refer. Uh, that is on growth of these cases in private hospitals um, uh, it is higher than that of the growth of cases of in public hospitals. This indicates you know supply induced uh, you know um, units for health, sub, um, health access or health demand and uh, similar trends can also be um, observed in the C section, cesarean sections deliveries in Indian context. Yeah, especially highly you know, cases are rising over the recent years and especially observed in private hospitals. SID is uh, one explanation for increasing utilization of medical services per capita with uh, increasing physician density, uh, keeping prices constant. Uh, this indicates permanent, uh, permanent excess demand, uh, decreasing you know, indirect cost, improved quality of treatment, defensive medicines reverse causality etc. So, if uh, permanent demand is higher then um, the, that D is you know uh, is, is much higher than that of uh, the induced cases uh, that might be excess than that of the induced cases physicians have to turn away some patients and uh, the left patients go to new physicians and this case correspond to S equal to 0 and T equal to 1 that is uh, the optimum one. So, this is basically effect of a supply extension at regulated price and excess uh, demand. So, when excess demand is there, so um, um, supply curve has the I mean the tendency to actually reach to that level since already demand is there all right. So, and that, that is why it is called a permanent you know excess demand and it is uh, largely um, affected by number of regions. And, uh, may be due to de decreasing indirect cost, improved quality of treatment. New physicians in proximity uh, means reduction in non-financial costs such as getting faster appointment, less travel time and uh, time devoted to each case increases. Uh, hence, you know demand shifts rightwards and more new demand at a given money or price is there. Defensive medicines are pr prescribed such as you know medicine which are actually uh, for doctor's perspective, perspective that will work as a kind of defensive measures. Depart, de, uh, this is departing from base medical practices to minimize the likelihood of patients conflict particularly in the context of malpractice uh, litigations. Reverse causality uh, if any uh, is there then that might induce the demand. Uh, new physicians are coming to uh, places with more demand and um, rather than demand is coming with more physicians consequently high per capita utilization of medical services leads to high physicians density on average. Similarly, uh, there are certain um, you know supply side uh, perspective observed through racial discrimination by physicians. It, it is sometimes due to the test based discrimination, due to statistical discrimination, due to efficient and inefficient discrimination. So, far as taste based is concerned, uh, I mean there are lots of uh, stereotypes involved in, in our medical consultations. I mean doctors uh, or the physician may or may not interact uh, the patient uh, because of their color or race. They may not treat subject to patients based on belief that they will not uh, follow up medication or are not you know good candidate for uh, treatment. So, that is 
um, based on some statistical you know uh, discrimination they, they, they make. Then there are some um, discrimination based on uh, welfare point of view that is basically efficient and inefficient which one is going to be efficiently setting up the physicians and accordingly uh, more uh, facilities are provided. So, discrimination and health disparities are actually uh, correlated. Uh, other uh, indicators such as uh, wage rate and labor market for the physicians are very essential. Uh, this helps in deciding the initial uh, level or the decision for, uh, for the physician to act as a physician or the decision to specialize and decision about how much of work is there uh, once you know physician has a complete training. But you know that uh, training requires more time and uh, supply uh, the demand in the market may not be catch, catched up to the you know uh, supply supply uh, because of the training period. Training of the physicians will show one chart and that really you know time consuming and there are also entry barriers, eligibility criteria etc. Uh, as part of entry barrier then license to practice etc. So, these also result in some monopoly you know rents that has negative implications on uh, the supply uh, or the supply induced demand and another one is um, that might be positively impacting because of positive or the better quality of health care. So, this is the chart of uh, US uh, you know and the time requirement in years of various residency and fellowship program uh, to, uh, to act as a physician starting with a medical school medical school then uh, then then different uh, services it require the time it require age of tip, uh, typical medical student. So, in different years they, they are capable of uh, treating uh, we are referring to J. Bhattacharya at all 2013 health economics chapter number 5. Similarly, physician wages even if the training period of uh, physician is similar their wages differ across countries and supplies induced demand is different due to salary differential. Newly trained physicians may migrate to uh, countries with better wages. Healthcare in India becomes less accessible due to you know, number of cases of brain drain. Okay, so, this is the, what the country is experiencing doctor brain drain. You can see highest is noted in India, uh, Indian cases because of the um, you know so wage rate is very different. India, UK, US and Canada and UAE um, by PPP Tom, the salaries in US dollar in 2017 is, is given and India's figures are much lesser, hence doctors or the physician prefer to migrate to the countries where uh, they will earn better. We are referring to Statista database, it is also available in our institute. Um, you can also um, uh, refer uh, the online documents for it. Um, for the record. I think these are all for the uh, physician acting as a supply induced you know healthcare demand ok. Um, so, that is all uh, in the next lecture we will continue physician as a provider of health and we will also discuss the role of hospital as health provider as well. So, references we have cited and I think will be useful. Thank you.